So the Oakland Raiders spent the 40th overall pick drafting Trayvon Mullen, and if I'm being honest, I have some concerns with that pick. I could just talk about them, but instead let me just jump into the actual film study portion of this video and showing you about them. One thing was something like this. If we take a look, he's going to have man coverage against that Alabama receiver right there, and the Alabama receiver is going to run a crossing route straight over to the middle of the screen. So you know, this is a decent route to beat man coverage, and after the ball is snapped and the play develops, there does seem to be some separation here. But there is going to be a problem, and it's going to be that clumsy middle linebacker right over there in the middle of the screen. Because of that, watch how it basically creates a pick and gives more separation, and Mullen just isn't able to recover, and it ends up being a completion. Now granted, not a terrible completion, and Mullen did make the tackle pretty shortly after, so you know, 4 yard gain, not the end of the world. But as a whole, I just feel like Mullen should have been a little bit more aware on that play, and realized that there was a middle linebacker in the area, and either cut to the inside, or cut to the outside, but find a way to get around him quicker. Sure, a 4 yard gain isn't the end of the world, but it was 1st and 10 there, and now you're able to have a 2nd and 6, which is definitely a much easier situation than if you got an incompletion, and it was a 2nd and 10. It's also a tough play, if I'm being fair, and I should mention that I don't hate Mullen by any means, I think he'll be a solid contributor. I'm just saying I have some concerns about the pick. Can he be a starter? Sure, but again, I have some problems with him and I want to talk about them. That one was definitely a more forgivable mistake, and I wouldn't bring it up if that way was just one play alone where he wasn't quite able to make the play. But I do feel like he struggles, particularly in those crossing routes, and here will be another example of him doing just that. This is going to be man coverage, which means that Mullen is in charge of covering that receiver right there. That's the designed man. And so since Alabama is going to send him in motion to the middle of the screen, this now means that Mullen has to follow him, but look at where he's lined up. He's significantly further to the bottom half of the screen than his assigned man is. I mean, a solid yard, maybe even two yards further to the bottom of the screen. Maybe you can make the argument that he didn't want to give away the fact that this is man coverage. You want to potentially make Tua think that this is potentially zone. However, he did a terrible job if that was his idea because he still moved pretty close to the inside. Really, he could just called for a switch with his other defensive back in the area if he didn't want to give anything away. Clearly, he already gave it away with the man coverage and he's kind of just a little bit lazy in getting through the top half of the screen. Lazy is probably the wrong word, but he just didn't do a great job of getting in position and as you see, since it is a crossing route, that receiver was wide open. Granted, the great comes in defensive line certainly did their part and were able to get the Tua, but it still was just uh, not a great play. Honestly, when it comes to defensive backs, just having good positioning is half the battle right there. If you're out of position, it can make things a lot more difficult for you. Like on this next one, it is once again going to be a situation where Mullen just doesn't do what he's supposed to do and doesn't get in perfect position. He's going to be playing man coverage against that Alabama receiver right there, and as you see, the receiver is going to be going a little bit in motion to the middle of the screen. And so now, as you see, as he cuts into the middle of the screen, he is easily open, going to make this catch and try to pick up some yards, but look at Mullen here. Every player is accounted for here except for Mullen. He's the one guy who's not getting blocked. So this now means that he should run up and try to make this play, but he's just playing so soft right now, which just really you shouldn't be doing. Now granted, Clemson does make this play, but that's because someone got off their blocks and made a great play, not necessarily because Mullen did what he was supposed to do. In fact, Mullen did not do what he was supposed to do. I know he was focused on not giving up the touchdown. However, if that receiver breaks to the inside and no one gets off their block quick enough, that could have been an easy touchdown for Alabama. That is another concern I do have with Mullen is the fact that he is playing on on a loaded Clemson defense, and part of me does kind of wonder how much of his success was from the defense. I mean, granted, a good defense doesn't make you a good player. I mean, if you're a garbage player on the best defense in the league, people will still notice that you're garbage. So obviously, you have to have some talent, even with a good defense. But I do wonder if the good defense maybe makes him look a little bit better than he actually is. That's definitely just a concern of mine. And there's a reason I keep saying a concern of mine, because I hope for everyone to do well. I want everyone to be a good player. You know, I don't root against guys by any means. I'm not like Colin Coward, who bashes Baker Mayfield, but then hopes Baker Mayfield does bad so that way he can say that he was right. I'm not like that. When I say I have some concerns about someone, it's me hoping that they will fix these things and become a better player in the future, and you know, everything I have mentioned so far was mental, not necessarily physical. So I'm sure that was kind of the Oakland Raiders thought process to a degree, is hey, this guy does make some mental mistakes, but if we can just fix those, he can be a much better player. They're drafting him based off of potential, not necessarily how good are you today, and that does make some sense, especially with the fact that defensive backs do take a little bit longer to develop historically. There's also this other criticism I've seen of him, and it'll be explained with this play, where he has man coverage against that Notre Dame player right over there, and that Notre Dame player is going to be running a go route right over there to the left side of the screen. One thing you'll notice is that the Notre Dame receiver is going to try to create some contact here, and that's actually one thing that I like about Mullen, is the fact that he is 6'2 and 199 pounds, which is pretty good height and weight for a corner. Especially these days in the NFL, where there are so many big, tall, strong receivers, you are going to need to have somebody who can go against them. So he doesn't get slowed down too much, there is a bit of separation, 
situation, but he is able to knock the ball away. However, there's a flag. That's another one of his criticisms that he can get a little bit too contact happy downfield, and that does result in some penalties from time to time. Although personally, I'm just I wouldn't be too worried about that if I'm drafting him. You know, those plays are gonna happen, but I'd rather a guy make some contact a little bit too often and maybe draw an extra penalty or two than a guy who's afraid of making contact and will give up a bunch of yards. I mean, your mindset does in a way kind of have to be just make the play first and then focus on not giving up much yards later. Obviously, you don't want to give up a penalty if possible, but it's going to happen sometimes. But as long as you make the play, half the time, the refs won't even call a little bit of contact. Actually, a lot more than half the time. If, as long as you don't get anything too crazy, oftentimes the refs will not call it. And sometimes when there clearly is pass interference, the refs won't call it. So, you know, it is worth the risk. I mean, look at what Richard Sherman has done of his career. And he absolutely is the type of guy that'll grab a guy's arm from time to time. But sometimes it's what you have to do. But anyways, that's something that I feel like he's gotten some criticism for, but I don't really feel like it's necessary. But on this next play, I'll show you where I think he actually does something well. Yes, I have some concerns with him. I'll talk about some more concerns in a second, but this is more of just a breakdown of him as a player, not just me saying why I negatively think he's a bad player. I don't really just make negative videos on this channel. If you've watched this channel, you know that. Even my Nathan Peterman video, I tried to be as positive as I possibly could have. But anyways, as you see on the screen, that's the coverage that Clemson is in, as it's going to be a cover one linebacker blitz. That's where Mullen is on the screen, and it's actually going to be bad news on paper as his assigned man is running a slant route here, which is a great way to beat a cover one linebacker blitz. It's a quick cut to the middle of the screen, and since there is going to be no one taking away that middle of the screen, this is perfect because the quick cut can allow someone to get open, and since he's going to be going to the middle of the screen, it can allow for a better angle for the quarterback to try to hit him. So, you know, great situation right off the gate if you are a Notre Dame in this situation. However, look at how Mullen is able to break in and essentially take away that gap. I know this throw didn't even end up coming to him, but honestly, if the throw does go to that receiver on top half of the screen, Mullen might have been able to punch it out of his hands. If it was a catch, it wouldn't have been a catch for many yards, maybe three or four yards, and on a second down and 14, that's totally okay to give up three or four yards. One on that first play, giving up four yards and making it a second down and six just isn't a great play, not a terrible play by any means, but something you would like to avoid if possible. One other thing I like about him is his balance. That's something that I don't feel like people don't talk about really at all when it comes to corners, but I think is very valuable is how good of a job can you do in making sure that you don't tumble over in certain situations and get off balance. Balance is a very important thing. I'll show you what I mean with this play. Now it's going to be in the top half of the screen as that's where he is and take a look at what's going to end up happening here. So the Notre Dame player tries to cut back in but look at Mullen here. More importantly look at how he basically plants that right foot basically right where he wants it. All his power is going on his right foot right here. His left foot is just to basically pivot and put him in a direction that'll help him with his balance. The whole point of a quick cut like that is to get your assigned man off balance. As you cut right there and basically he'll continue running to the top half of the screen his momentum will continue going in that direction. But with Mullen's good footwork and good balance he's able to easily just bait, not even give up any yards at all. Now granted this play was never going to go in Mullen's direction regardless because of the trick play to the bottom half of the screen, but you do have to give credit to Mullen for winning his one-on-one -on -one matchup even though it didn't matter. I mean, that receiver definitely ran his route as well as he could have, but Mullen just did a good job of taking it away. The whole point of that route from that receiver really was just to keep Mullen to the top half of the screen, and it worked out fine, but you know, I'm using this as an example of showing that Mullen can play. However, it wasn't all good from Mullen. He definitely had his share of bad moments, even from that game. Like, if you take a look at this play, once again, man coverage on the top half of the screen, and one thing you're going to notice here is that that Notre Dame player is going to try to create some contact here right at the line. Unlike the first time where Mullen didn't really get moved so much, this time the Notre Dame player is actually putting both his arms on Mullen, which is, makes a lot of sense because Mullen is a slightly bigger back. Because he put both his arms on Mullen, it's going to allow him to push Mullen off to the right side of the screen even more. And so because of that, it's going to actually allow Mullen's assigned man to get a decent amount of separation, and while it doesn't appear there's any separation right now, this is actually a great situation for a receiver to be in. I know it's kind of hard to tell because this image quality isn't the best, again, as I mentioned before, it's just hard to find good quality college games. With the NFL, they have all 22, there is no all 22 for college, I kind of have to just use whatever I can find, and unfortunately sometimes whatever I can find doesn't show the plays the best way I want to show them. But if you can't make it out, I'll explain it to you. You, basically what's happening right now is that the receiver's head is facing the ball right now. He's looking back to see where the ball is, whereas Mullen had to catch up, so now his back is facing the ball. Mullen ends up running past the receiver because the receiver was able to look, whereas Mullen was essentially blindfolded because of that initial move. Mullen got beat at the line, which allowed a receiver to then have an advantage, and because of that advantage, the receiver capitalized by being able to make a catch. But actually what I find even more interesting is going to be a play on that same drive. Once again, man coverage in the top half of the screen. However, take a look at what Mullen does this time. He's not going to welcome any contact at all, he starts running just straight back. He's just going to give up a couple yards. He wants to make sure that he doesn't get beat like he did last time. It's good if you don't want to get beat over the top. However, the problem is that that receiver is not running a go route this time. He's actually going to be cutting in. He gets wide open here. It's a run play, so it didn't matter, but he was wide open if this was a pass. And I actually don't even think that he was trying to get open on that play too much. I think he was just, you know, running a route to make sure 
Mullen stays away from the running back. But despite that, Mullen just kind of made a bad play there. He essentially overthought it, where because he got beat by physicality one time, now he wanted to make sure he didn't get beat by that again, but really it was okay to get beat by physicality every now and then. If a receiver has to use both arms to try to create contact on you, that's not too difficult. You know, maybe he shouldn't be that close, maybe he should have taken an extra step, but you don't have to take an extra three steps, that's too much. He overcorrected there and it came back to bite him. There's one more thing I want to talk about when it comes to Mullen, and that's how effective can he be in the running game, because that is something that matters in the corner. Maybe it's not the most important thing, but it does actually have some value if you have a corner who can stop the run. There are plays where you're going to have to have a corner be able to go out and make a play, and Mullen can go out and make a play. Like on this one, it's actually going to be run through the top half of the screen, and so Mullen's going to be the guy who has to run out and try to make this play, but look at how he's going to be able to do it. He very quickly realizes what's going on and breaks up to the top half of the screen, and because he does have that quick first step and he is able to move very quickly, he is going to do a very good job of running up there. I mean, that's where the Alabama running back is, and he has a few steps on him already through the top half of the screen. Now, granted, Alabama does have someone who's going to be trying to block him, but Mullen is ahead of him too, so he can potentially run around him and basically force the back to have to run to the inside. Either he'll be in position to make the tackle to the outside, or the halfback will have to cut to the inside, in which case there will be another Clemson player in the area who could try to make a tackle. Granted, this play actually doesn't even matter as it gets called back, but Mullen did a very good job of that first step on that one. I thought that play still showed what he can do at the beginning of the play, even though it didn't end up mattering. There was also this play, and it is going to be man coverage, as you see, as that's his assigned man, but take a look what's going to happen once that man goes goes in motion. Since he's going through the top half of the screen and Mullen doesn't want to be out of position, there's actually going to be a switch here. Those two Clemson players are pretty much just going to switch assignments, where the one on the top half of the screen is going to now be in charge of covering that receiver, and Mullen is now going to be in charge of covering the top right hand corner of the screen. There's just going to be a switch here, where the defensive back who was in charge of covering the middle of the screen deep is now going to be in charge of covering the receiver that Mullen was initially in charge of covering, and now Mullen of course is responsible of covering the middle of the screen deep. However, this is not going to be a passing play at all, and it's going to be a run through the bottom half of the screen. And one thing, look at how good of a job Mullen does of realizing that and getting over to the bottom half of the screen. A lesser safety might not have been able to realize what was going on, and that's even more impressive considering the fact that Mullen isn't a safety, he's a corner. He just happened to be playing a safety on that role because of the switch, but now because of this switch, this now means that Mullen has to try to make a tackle. Now granted, this is almost an impossible play for you to make if you're a corner. I mean, what do you do with this situation? How can you make this tackle? It's kind of one of the frustrating things about the helmet to helmet situation because of course, I mean, you want to protect the players, but it just makes things more difficult for a defensive player because how do you make this tackle here? If you go low, it'll be helmet to helmet and it's a penalty. If you just tackle him straight up, well then his helmet can run straight into your chest and offensive players are allowed to hit defensive players with their helmet for some reason, so then that could be a very bad situation. I remember the Luke Keekley injury from a couple years back when a similar play like this happened where he kind of just tried to hug him and that just ended up being a bad decision. Really the only way you can try to make this play and also not risk hurting yourself is by going really low and going below the helmet. But because he did that, this allows the running back to run over and get into the end zone for a touchdown. So, you know, bad play, right? Well, no, I don't think so. I think that was a fine play. I think that's what you have to do in that situation. You have to go as low as you possibly can and hope that the running back isn't able to continue running too far forward. It took him reaching the ball out and getting it over the end zone for it to be a touchdown, and honestly, I've always said I don't like when you reach out and try to get the ball over the end zone. Unless, of course, it's fourth down or there's not much time left or something, but I personally just value having possession way more than potentially getting the touchdown as opposed to being at the one-yard line. But that's neither here nor there. That's not really what I'm trying to talk about. In terms of the actual tackling form, I thought Mullen did exactly what you should do in that situation. He's a fine player. I do actually think that he has some really good traits and I think he has some negative traits. Most of my concerns towards him are mental concerns, which probably is a good thing if you're a Raiders fan, because that gives you hope that he can not potentially, you know, work out the kinks and become a very good player. It also probably means that he won't be winning a Defensive Rookie of the Year award. I think he will take some time to develop, and you know what? That's okay. The Raiders clearly are in a rebuild. I do think they're going to try to be somewhat competitive next year. I definitely don't think they're going to try to tank. And in fact, they didn't try to tank last year either. I always hate when people get tanking and rebuilding confused. Those are two different things. Rebuilding is when you know you're bad, so you give up assets to try to get draft picks to be better in the future. Meanwhile, tanking is when you intentionally try to be bad to try to get as good of a draft pick as possible. And I don't think they did that. They were trying to win last year. They weren't tanking. They weren't a very talented team, so they didn't win much. But they weren't intentionally losing, so that doesn't qualify as tanking in my opinion. But anyways, I don't hate Mullen or this pick here at number 40. He clearly has some talent. I definitely am concerned about certain things, but hopefully he does figure those things out and becomes a very good player in the near future. <laughs>